First question is from Zach DP. How detrimental is alcohol to weight training? How much is too much? You know, this is a, a very common question as a trainer that we get all the time, right? Do you guys, do you guys remember getting this all the time from clients? Like, you know, I have this goal, but how do I, how do I, <laughs> I can't get past this porn name. I'm sorry. I have to, I have to point out the elephant in the room. <laughs> Zach DP. Come on guy. That's, right. a, that's a, it's probably not what it means, but it's fine. Yeah. Let's, let's move on. We're like, we're like, yeah. we're I'm like, like a little kid. dude. We're like kids over here. Can't yeah. focus. All right. <laughs> sorry. You guys are sorry. fucking with me. I'm like, what, what do I not know? Yeah. Right now? <laughs> shake it out. Shake it out. Yeah. All right. No, all the time I would get clients and people asking me about, I used to get this one a lot. Like, um, you know, Oh, uh, you know, I definitely want to lose weight, this and that, but make sure that, you know, I have five glasses of wine a week. No, I used How to many get, less calories? I had clients that yeah. would say that was their that was their thing was like, listen, I'll do whatever you tell me to, but I'm Anything not- Anything but the wine. Yeah, I'm not giving up my wine yeah. at night or I'm not giving up my my scotch or whatever it is. And it's like, you know, uh, it, 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 I, I don't know if I, I've, I don't know if I've even figured out or the, the best way to answer this to clients, but I, I do know this, like if you have that attitude of- you know, that you need to be drinking or you have to be drinking. Normally that person is not very successful at, at, at achieving their fitness goals. Yeah. It's not to say that there are not people that have found ways to integrate alcohol into their lifestyle and still maintain it. It's, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is the people that come in- they have that attitude. That, yeah, exactly. That yes. have that attitude from the gates that say, I'm not willing to give X up or I'm not giving these days up and how do I figure out a plan mm -hmm. to integrate that? If you come in with that, 99% uh, of those people failed at getting to their goal. Now, if you were open to, hey, I can totally get rid of it, whatever it takes to figure out or get to my goal, and then hopefully one day I can start to integrate it into my lifestyle, those yeah. people have some success. Yeah. Well, it's always, yeah, it's, I mean, it may not have that big of an, an effect overall, but like I've noticed uh, training people, it's always like one thing. It's, it's that one thing that is on that list of like untouchables. Like we, yeah, everything but this. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, you know, give up, uh, that those snacks. Cause I, I live and die for those every day. When in fact, like that was the one key that if we finally addressed that, like a couple years later, like they're finally okay to do that and then they had like yeah. this crazy transformation yeah it's not even it's not even necessarily the alcohol itself i think it's the attitude because i will say that look for the most part for the most part alcohol consumption is going to reduce your body's ability to build muscle burn body fat adapt all that other stuff now there are small uh there's a small percentage of times when some alcohol is going to actually be better for your health now i'm not talking about the physical physiological uh health benefits of alcohol. There's some studies that suggest maybe there's some of that. I don't believe that. What I think what I think is if you use alcohol occasionally because you're connecting with friends and family, it's part of a religious ceremony, it's something that you're doing with your spouse and you're enjoying uh, you know, it's your it's your anniversary, that is good for a segment of your health which then can contribute to general overall health. But that being said, physically speaking, um, there's no benefit uh, from alcohol, and when it comes to building muscle, it's mostly yeah. detriment. Well, I, I look at the, there's a there's a few reasons for this, and one of the reasons is um, it's completely empty calories. It's just it's not there's, there's no benefit. There is no benefit for it towards you burning more body fat or building more muscle. And the reality is that most people don't get enough of what they need as it is. Right? How often did you guys ever evaluate a diet and go, man, you hit all your macro targets? That's great. Mm -hmm. Never. Yeah. You never did. In fact, we always we always advocate for before you take anything away from anybody's diet, no matter how shitty their diet is, is to start to add things into the diet that they need. So, if you already are lacking in nutrients and then you're adding something that's taking up potentially 200 to 500 calories, depending on how much alcohol you're drinking, you make it really, really difficult to get what your body needs, and then you add in the behavioral things that happen with it. Normally when you drink, you have a tendency to want to eat foods that are also not uh, as advantageous for your goals. Right. And then the after effect of the next day. The next day, a lot of times, I feel like trash because of how because I drank and I was in, ingesting something that didn't serve my body. And then the motivation that I lacked mm -hmm. to, to exercise the next you day. You know, it's funny too. Yeah. The more, the harder you have challenges with food, the more you have to willingly prevent yourself from binging or overeating, 
the more likely you are to do those things when you drink alcohol because alcohol is a classic. It, it, it classically reduces inhibitions. This is why the jokes about sleeping with people you know, that you normally wouldn't when you're drunk or, oh, I did that crazy thing or I, I did karaoke when normally I wouldn't go up and sing on stage. It lowers your inhibitions. And so if you have this relatively, if you don't have a great relationship with food and if it's always kind of a struggle, you're probably more likely to eat really crappy food when you drink alcohol because it lowers inhibitions and now you feel like, hey, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stop myself anymore. I'm gonna do whatever I want or whatever. So it tends to do that. I'll tell you this, okay, that all being said, okay, if you have a healthy relationship with alcohol, you're using it appropriately, it's not an abuse or whatever. One thing you could do is you can you can really mitigate a lot of the negative effects from it by chain by by kind of manipulating how you use it. And one of the biggest things you could do, one of the most important things you could do is not drink late at night. That is a big one because what you're doing by drinking late at night is not only are you drinking alcohol, but now you're interfering with sleep. So now you've just doubled all the damage. I learned this as an adult. I, mean, I was like, when I was younger and we'd go out drinking, it'd be at night and then I come home and you have crappy sleep and whatever. And then you wake up and you feel like, and I, I remember as an adult, you know, when you're an adult, you kind of be like, Hey, let's go, uh, let's go hang out. You know, it's noon. Let's go to a bar or whatever. And then you drink during the day and then you, you know, five, six o'clock rolls around. You stop drinking. You sober up a little bit and then your sleep is a little bit better. You, so that's one thing. Yeah, you no, do. sleep is terrible for sleep. And I, and I think um, there, there's a high majority of people that use alcohol after work as, as a way to cut the edge off and to, to kind of relax. And it's sort of like it becomes a, a bit of a ritual, even if it's just one or two glasses, you know, which then can kind of, uh, you know, can, you can compile later. Like you could start, you know, that, that could be the start to that that um but you know like looking at that as like a potential th th this could become a habit that you form like this is my go-to to relax and so that's the behavior side of that uh you know that i always like try to pay attention to and it's not it's not benefiting you uh in terms of anything else like it's going to take away from your sleep it's going to take away from your performance in the gym so i i try to look at alcohol as something that i use as a treat so it's like a like I'm looking forward to it. You know, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna hang out with my friends. I'm gonna celebrate something. Like, like that's where I want to use alcohol. No, we we all uh, openly admit to to having an occasional drink. In fact, we we partnered with a company like Zbiotic. Do you think, Sal, that the the what is what makes the Zbiotic so impactful? is the fact that it helps with the sleep. Do you think that's what a majority, because I that's what I notice when I use that, right? I don't drink that it's often. It's not a sleep aid. Uh, so it's not that it makes you sleep better. It's a, it's, a, it's a genetically engineered bacteria that produces an enzyme that breaks down a, a negative byproduct or buildup that's caused from alcohol metabolism called uh, acetylaldehyde. And what this stuff does is it, it builds up and typically your liver creates the enzyme that can destroy it or, or can break it down. But what happens when you drink alcohol is you build up more than you can break down. So you get this over, you get this buildup of this byproduct of alcohol. And what are the symptoms of uh, acetylaldehyde buildup? Um, inflammation, uh, headaches, la you know, terrible sleep, bad gut, your gut th is thrown, all the stuff that we would classically label as a, a hangover. So uh, Ziba, and look, I'll tell you what right now, when I, when this company, we, I initially heard about this company through an article that I read about this product and how the author tested it and other people tested it and thought it was amazing. I talked about it on the podcast, the company heard that we had talked about it and contacted us and sent us some samples. And I was extremely skeptical. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Let's see if this actually works. It is eerie. It is eerie how well that it works. I mean, we even did a video where mm -hmm. Adam, Justin, uh, myself, and Doug played a drinking game, and mm -hmm. like idiots, we modified the rules thinking it would yeah. be better. In reality, what we, we did went to the absolute extreme. We it, yeah, we was dumb. It was very what we did was irresponsible. We went way too far. I had never been that drunk. I don't think I've been that drunk in ten years or longer. And we did, but we did the Zbiotics, and the next day. Normally, the way I would feel would be like I need to stay home from work, sick, like really, really bad. Mm -hmm. Instead, I felt like a little tired. I didn't. I noticed I didn't feel, and it, and it had to be because. And I've used ever since then. I've used Zbiotics a few other times. So you know, I said drinking during the day instead of at night. Zbiotics is the first product I would say is one way you can mitigate some of the negatives, especially if, if fitness and health is a priority for you. You know, drink that, 
then have your drinks and you'll probably you're going to notice a difference. But to Justin's point, the the thing that you have to be, and this just takes self awareness on on you. If you are the person who it, it's become a behavior or a habit, or you if you, it triggers you to say you can't have it or you shouldn't have it, and you have a problem with saying, hey, you know, I can go you know, weeks or months without having alcohol in my life, there's an issue there. And I mean, I don't care if it's, if it's we're talking about alcohol right now, but they could be talking about anything. We've talked about this mm -hmm. before. If you have a problem, it has control over you. You don't have control over right. it. Yeah.